while we are honoring our beloved veterans today who sacrificed so much for our freedom, uh, we are blessed and privileged to pay special tribute and recognition to Ivan J. Houston, son, husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and a military war hero who helped liberate a city, a city in Italy, and he's with a family who is an icon within this community. He was a successful business person, and uh, all of you know the Golden State Mutual Life Insurance Company. His father co-founded that company. He also served on the board of a number of leading corporations, and this honorable man is blessed and we are blessed to have him here. He's lived the life that matters, and he contributes and continues to do that. And so it is my honor and our honor to salute a special veteran, Mr. Ivan J. Houston, my friend. Mr. Houston. We have a certificate uh, that speaks to our appreciation, and I'm gonna ask uh, Brother G. Bernard Brown, our moderator, to come forward and to uh, read this uh, certificate of uh, appreciation. Brother Brown is uh, coming as this uh, moderator of the church and has a rich history with Mr. Houston as well, sir. Well, we'll stand together. We're going to stand together because I left my glasses at home and I can't see. <laughs> you know what? I, I feel bad. Listen, I feel bad because I didn't tell Brother Brown that I was going to put him on this spot. Make him some time. Make him feel bad. Stand up here, man. Brother Click is going to read it for you. In recognition of your outstanding service to this country, your unwavering bravery as a member of the 3rd Battalion, 370th Regiment Combat Team, 92nd. Infantry Division of the United States, Fifth Army. It is with the utmost respect and honor that we present this certificate to a true living hero, Ivan J. Houston, World War II veteran, Purple Heart and Bronze Star recipient, motivator, educator, and author of Black Warriors, the Buffalo Soldiers of World War II. Presented on this Sunday, November 9th, 2014, the Congregational Church of the Christian Fellowship at 2085 South Hobart Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, the Reverend James K. McKnight, Pastor, Congregational Church of Christian Shells Fellowship. We honor you. I you. share a few minutes and then I'm just going to ask him a few questions and then we'll be in the back chance for you to speak to him more uh, uh, more clearly thank you Mr. Houston help yourself sir thank you so very very much uh, certainly uh, a special thanks to uh, Reverend McKnight uh, thank you for Ruth Jordan and uh, Carol Paul Holiday for arranging this uh, veterans uh, day celebration here at the church and thank all of you uh, church members for being here and uh, celebrating with me. Uh, this is uh, a great honor uh, just to be with you uh, here in a community that I grew up in many, many years ago. I'm very delighted also to have uh, uh, two of my children here. And uh, they're, uh, they've been with me as I've been uh, sort of celebrating or uh, writing this book, which is about World War II and the Buffalo Soldiers of World War II. Not too many people, you see the Buffalo Soldiers I know, you know, in parades, because they are representing the Buffalo Soldiers that fought after the Civil War and in the Spanish-American War. Well, uh, I was a World War II Buffalo soldier. 
I was. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, a member, as the certificate was, that was given to me says, of Combat Team 370. We fought in Italy. Uh, we fought uh, the Germans and some Italians in Italy. And it's not too well known because most people thinking of World War II uh, remember D-Day, right. uh, you remember, people remember General Eisenhower, right. people remember General Patton, right. but few people realize that a very fierce war was still going on in Italy. And that's where uh, the 92nd Infantry Division Buffalo Division, because our insignia of the Buffalo was the Buffalo. Right, right. And in 1943, 44, 45, when we were in the Army and engaged in fighting, the United States was a different place. Yeah, there was a lot of segregation, a lot of dim uh, discrimination, Jim Crow really prevailed. And uh, nevertheless, this was our country. Right. You know, we, this was our country. Yes, sir. We, there was no other country right. that we came from. Yes, sir. We helped to build this country. Yes, sir. And uh, we fought for this country. Right. Now, we had fierce fighting in Italy. If you ever go there, and you go to the city of Florence. That is where the Renaissance city, it is where Michelangelo's David is. It's where he made the Pieta, which is in the uh, uh, St. Peter's in Rome. This is a uh, beautiful city, the city of the Renaissance. And uh, there, seven miles south of that very famous city, there's a, a, a cemetery, and there are over 4,000 graves, and uh, it has a beautiful mural in the back of the cemetery, like only the Italians could make, because it's a marble and mosaic tile, and it shows all of the battles that we fought in Italy, and it has a big buffalo in black and gold mosaic tile. And very, you know, who knows this? Not many people. Don't know. Well, there are over 400 buffalo soldiers buried that I fought with buried in that cemetery. I know. 400. They were, many of them, 18, 19 years old, like I was. And uh, I think that it is probably the only place in the world that does show and remember those of us who were World War II Buffalo soldiers. I, you know, have been there several times, sometimes with my family. And uh, this year, after I had been there last year and uh, also this year, but I wrote a poem because it sort of sums up my feeling of what happened to us in World War II and in Italy and those young men who are still buried there. <clears throat> It's a simple poem, and it goes something like this. Go to Florence, if you will. See the crosses upon the hill. Notice the murals on the wall. Buffaloes in arrows represent us all. Walk the green grass, crosses row on row. Young black men 
killed attacking the foe. It is God who looks upon this field, blessed men who fought and would not yield. Jim Crow was there, blocking their way, causing them grief day after day. These men fought evil that enveloped the land. They battled for freedom with one tied hand. Come on, give me a hand! Thank you, Mr. Houston. Please be seated. Wasn't that fabulous? Yeah. Yes. Outstanding. Come on, let's give a great hand to Mr. Levi Thornhill. Thank you, Mr. Thornhill. But I want to take a moment to acknowledge certainly our honoree. Mr. Thornhill, sir, thank you for your excellence, for your valor, for your courage. Can we clap our hands? One man in infantry, one man for the Air Force, and we are so glad to have you. There's one sentence in your book, in the interest of time, I will share it with you, sir. You will have a chance, uh, friends, to uh, get, get a copy of the book. And, uh, but, but there was a sentence that I underlined that was really, really powerful to me. And this is what it said. It says something. Um, we were fighting the Nazis and Italian fascists with one hand and Jim Crow with the other. And one of the things that I read in your book, Mr. Houston, is how your recollection of the events during World War II on the front line fighting were different than some others who cate categorized their uh, findings in their books. And there were times when there was a great disparity between what you remember as somebody who was actually there and what other persons heard uh, perhaps second hand. But what do you mean by that? What was the thing that, uh, that you felt you were really fighting against Jim Crow? Can you give us an example of that, sir? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, <coughs> the, uh, <coughs> excuse me. The, uh, it was the fact that in World War II, the way the army was structured, we, our officers, could not ever command even a white private. That was the way the army was structured. Black, we, the army tra did not train black soldiers fun more or less for combat, except in rare exceptions. Of the more than one million black uh, soldiers, sailors, and Marines in, uh, that were in World War II, perhaps only 50,000 were in combat units. Most of our uh, soldiers were in service units. We, they drove trucks. My brother drove trucks over the mountains between uh, China and India. Many of them unloaded ships. Many of them built airfields. But not very many of us were in combat. Why? That was the way, it was as though the South had won the Civil War. The Army was led by mainly Southern officers. Our general, our commanding general of the 92nd Infantry Division, Edward Allman, uh, did not think Negroes, as we were called then, uh, you know, knew how to fight. He said, with rare exceptions, they don't, you know, they don't, they don't know how to fight. And yet, you know, here he's, we have 400 in the cemetery in Florence. 
killed in action, and probably another at least 400 that were died there, but were sent home in caskets. So, and he also said, you know, they think because I'm a Southerner, and he was, and all of our top Army commanders in our division were from the South, because it was assumed they knew how to handle Negroes. That was the, that, that, and uh, he said, yes, we like Negroes. This is a quote. We like them, but we don't want to eat with them. So, you know, those are just instances why I say, and my poem says, we fought with one tied hand. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we're gonna have one more question, and this is a question, uh, Mr. Houston, the, the story of how you left your family as a young man, you weren't even 20 years old yet. And I read about uh, you being, your, your mother said that this was the first time she saw your daddy crying. Uh, but tell me, sir, when you went off and you dealt with all that you had to deal with, and there was one particular scene when y'all were advancing up a hill and the bullets were coming and such, and I, and I don't want to manipulate the situation, but tell me how your faith in God sustained you through some of the more difficult times, if you can tell us that, sir, and then we'll close with prayer. Well, uh, I always uh, felt, you know, I had a strong belief in God. Uh, I could see even when I was on a troop ship sailing in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, I would look, and everything was dark because there were no lights. We couldn't, because we were, if submarines were around. But nevertheless, you could see the phosphorus, which is light as you, the ship went through the water, it looks phosphorus, it lights up. The water lights up. It's an amazing scene. And uh, then also, it's so dark, and you look up in the sky, and you see millions and millions of stars, and you just know God that this real. universe is created by God. You just see it there. You're just a speck in the ocean on a ship, a darkened ship, yet the sky the stars are out, it's beautiful, and you know God created this. Amen. Let's clap our hands one more time for Mr. Ivan. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our living legend, a man of strength and valor and courage, a man Distinguish himself in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.